Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Trey and I want to talk about Superman and Lois because I saw the CW's Superman and Lois and I don't know, I'm confused because you're telling me this is an Arrowverse show? It looks like they put time and effort into it. You know, wow. Wow, it it is pretty interesting to see to see this actually. But you know, after watching it, I am pretty ex pretty excited, looking forward to Superman and Lois, to be honest. Um, it's kind of cool because it's kind of like they're doing a reverse of Lois and Clark, Superman Rebirth, and Action Comics Rebirth run. Because there's a lot of things that are going on in the reverse instead of forward. So that's pretty interesting, really, to be honest. Um. I'm actually, you know, loving everything about the show. Um, it's pretty interesting. I don't really have that m many issues, but other than that, I mean, I have a few issues, but other than that, the show's pretty solid, which is actually shocking, to be honest, to actually see, you know, Superman finally being loved or whatever and stuff like that. I really thought it was going to be the Lois Lane show. I'm not even going to lie. I really thought we they were going to hide behind the title Superman and Lois and then literally make it all about Lois Lane or Lois, you know, cucking Superman. But they seem like they have a good partnership deal or whatever and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Um, Spoiler alerts for episode one, the pilot. I I was, you know, heartbroken that Martha Kent died in the first episode. I'm like, dang, could y'all have at least give us like at least three episodes with her? Before you killed her off, I I knew it was coming as soon as I saw that opening of uh, of Jonathan Jonathan Kent dying early on or whatever and stuff like that. I was like, man. And then when we finally saw Martha, I said, it's over. It's a done deal. They're going to kill her off. But I thought they were like gonna at least give us give us at least four to five episodes with her before she died. And then they was like, nope, you dead now. Like <laughs> Jesus. Jesus Christ, and then, of course, they brought in, you know, 2020s, you know, issues with, you know, media news outlet because Clark lost his job, which, wow, you know, he lost his job, and, you know, I don't know what he's going to do for work right now besides being Superman, but it's pretty interesting to see, and, of course, you know, Lois Lane is Lois Lane, and she's, like, one of the most highest famous journalists in the world or whatever and stuff like that and the highest one the highest paid as well so you know if i think they're going to do what they're if if i know from reed and lois and clark she might read um write a book write some books on the side while also investigating things as well because during the time of, of superman lois and clark the comic book series or stuff like that when pre-new 52 Superman and Lois had ended up on that god off of New New 52 DC Universe that, oh God, anyway, they took the name The Whites, and, you know, at the time, you know, Lois were, was feeding information to our, I mean, not to our Lois, but to the New 52 Lois, as well as writing, you know, books and articles and stuff like that, but she had a pen name, so nobody knew that it was Lois Lane Lane, but it was Lois. She just went by a different pen name. So I'm thinking that's what Lois can do. Um, what's crazy is also with Action Comics and Superman, when they were on the farm, some of the farmers had like this alien goo thing, the black or something like that. Maybe whatever company brought up the farmland and Martha helped them out or whatever and stuff like that could be what go could happen that could be a good crossover event for batman and robin to come come through and i'm talking about damian wayne and stuff like that that way he can build his friendship with the boys and stuff like that um and that probably be be able to introduce not only robin you can introduce red robin tim drake depend depending on it um but i'm getting too far in my head i'm just thinking about everything else or whatever so with Lois and Clark and then Superman Rebirth Action Comics at the beginning of the series, they they stayed in Smallville. They stayed on the farm and it was like close to the end of the run um, of Peter J. Tomasi's amazing run. Oh, man. 
I, I'm sorry, the, the Rebirth run was was amazing. It was such a good form for Superman. And then DC ruined it by letting that loser, Brian Michael Bendis, write Superman. Whatever you do, CW, follow the Rebirth run. Use the Rebirth run as <laughs> your blueprint. Don't look at nothing Brian Michael Bendis did. Trust me. Do not look at anything Brian Michael Bendis did because it's hot garbage, to be honest. But the the show's pretty interesting. It looks like they got the, they they got the flying down a little bit better. From what I've heard, I heard that you know HBO is co-producing um this show. So the effects might be better, so that could be good. But the good thing is it's going in the right direction. Besides Black Lightning, I think Superman and Lois is probably one of the best Arrowverse shows we've got going on. You know, you only got two of them, really, because the rest of them are kind of mm, garbage, to be honest, especially Bat, Bat Skank. But yeah, I'm really excited. Now, now I'm not going to be saying it was an all-perfect pilot because I have issues. The twins. I'm sorry, the twins shouldn't be that damn old. They really shouldn't be. Did DC, did you not learn from WandaVision? You got these adorable children as twins and discovering their powers. That would have been way more interesting than melodramatic teenage boys or whatever. And especially, come on now, don't don't cook Jonathan Kent out of powers. Don't do that to Jonathan Kent. DC, for some reason, ever since, you know, y'all decided, Brian Michael Bendis came and aged up Jonathan Kent, you guys been treating that character like trash, and you're kind of doing it in this show as well. Jonathan Kent should be having powers, period. There's no half thingy, and I understand there's been some past Superman stories of what ifs where he had kids and one of the kids didn't have powers and the other one did, but come on, that that's such a lame plot point that you guys use where the parents have kids and one of them don't have it the other one do or whatever and stuff like that like no don't don't go down that route let jonathan because first off in that in that little intro when you were showing the twins jonathan had a good throwing arm you can't sit up here and tell me that boy didn't, um, didn't have no super strength you don't throw like that at a young age you really don't throw like that so let's Let's start, you know, exploring the fact that Jonathan gets his, gets his powers late later too, or whatever. But make sure the twins both get powers. Don't do this. One's normal, the other one's not, or whatever, and stuff like that. It's just weird. I don't really like that trope. It's a boring trope, to be honest. Like, just don't do it. Don't don't do it. Don't do don't do the trope. Don't do it. Jonathan next episode. Or later on in the series, develop some powers, but he needs to develop some powers. To be honest, he really got super strength. Layton super strength. Not as much, but he has more strength than the average, the average teenager. Let's put it like that. Because, again, that pilot, I mean, the, the intro when they were showing them as teenagers, I mean, as little kids and stuff like that. Jonathan literally threw a ball and snapped a rope with throwing the ball at the rope. You don't... You don't do that. You just can't just do that just magically, even with a good throwing arm. Not at a young age. Not at no eight eight year old age. So let's correct that. Um, let's see what my other issues are. Really, he's the twins. Um, Jordan's following that emo social outcast thing. That's a trope get rid of it get rid of it like you know you got you got about five episodes after that the boy need a haircut it's time for him to look a little bit proper um and stop dressing like a social outcast i'm over that one as well because that's such another trope in this in um with writers when they have that kind of division between twins and stuff like that they always want to make one of them mopey social outcast or whatever and i'm just like let's cut that that's another boring trope that i don't need to see um let's let's let him look like a regular teenager let's let him dress like a regular teenager as well but you know let's go with that um really and you know what i would have preferred is instead of making the boys twins what should have happened this is this is what i would have wanted from the boys is 
You have Jonathan Kent, which is the child of Superman and Lois. Then you have Christopher Kent, who is also the who is the son of General Zod. Right, right, right. Okay. I don't know if none of you guys know that, but Christopher Kent was the adoptive son of Lois and um, Clark before they had Jonathan Kent because it, it looked like Lois couldn't have kids with Superman. They've been trying and it didn't look like they was going to ever have any kids or whatever. But then a spaceship came from the Phantom Zone. It had Christopher Kent there. They adopted him. He became their son or whatever. And he even turned against his father. He even turned against his father to stay with Superman and Lois because he sees Superman and Lois as his parents. That could have been a good story because then you could have did the whole adoptive thing and then you could have did the whole General Zod thing. That would have been more impressive than the reveal at the end, Captain Luthor. And it's a black alternate version of Lex Luthor. Here we go again with taking another classical white character and making them another race. Even if it is an alternate take, you already did that with Jimmy Olsen. Why did you need to do that with Lex Luthor when you already had John Cryer already, you know, doing that on Supergirl? You should have just brought him in or you could have just brought in General Zod or you could have brought in another villain, another villain that didn't have anything to do with Lex Luthor or anything or somebody from Apocalypse. God forbid, you know, and that could have led up in, into Dark Side or something. But I wasn't really impressed with the Luthor thing because as soon as I saw him, I was like, oh, the way he's talking, he's talking, he's talking like he knows Superman. And I was like, there's only one person at this point who knows the story like that, and it's Lex Luthor. And then when he said he's from another world, and I'm just like, oh, okay, cool. Great. So are we going to deal with refugees from different worlds? But another thing I would want to see is I want to see, I wanted mind seeing Lana Lane level up and get her superwoman powers. I wanted mind Lana Lane getting the, a divorce from Kyle and actually falling in love with John Henry Irons, um, aka Steel. Bring in Steel, that would be amazing because their relationship in the comic books was amazing after she left her. Her um, husband, Pete Ross, and stuff like that. I don't know what happened um, with that relationship, but I, I think it fell apart and stuff like that. Or they retconned it out of existence or whatever. But I think it, it would have been so much better to have issues with Lana and Kyle or whatever and stuff like that. And then bring in John Henry Irons and his, his niece, Natasha, who stays with him and stuff like that. That would be cool because then you can build a little bit of a Superman family and don't act like we can't have a Superman family or whatever and stuff like that. It's not impossible. And I would love to see Melissa Benoist um, guest, make guest appearances as Supergirl because she's Supergirl. You just can't have her not appear sometimes. Um, and if you can't have her all the time or whatever, bring in her alternate reality self, um, Power Girl. So you get a busty um, woman that could that has features of Melissa Benoist and you bring her in that can be Power Girl or whatever and stuff like that, you know, and then you can have her crossover with um, JSA. I mean, not JSA, but Star Girl. I will want also did I say I want to see the new Superman, the Chinese Superman as well. That would be amazing to see as well, because then you get you can get Superman not only having to teach his son. His his sons his, about his abilities. He has to teach this Chinese guy who got his powers because they siphoned off of Summer Superman's energy and gave it to this Chinese boy, and now he was able to become Superman as well. You know, just bring in a little bit of you know storytelling or whatever. But really, it is way better than Batwoman. I can tell you that way better than Batwoman. Um, so far, you know, the only thing, the only thing, like I said, the only thing that's looking good on the CW, especially in the Arrowverse, is literally Black Lightning, and now you got Superman and Lois, so you got two good shows, you, you know, if we keep this up, we got something going on, DC, but, you know, like I said, stay the route of the Superman Rebirth run, or pre, pre-New 52, don't bring nothing from New 52 in at all, don't bring in nothing after the Rebirth run, at all don't don't even look at brian michael bendis run leave it alone but other than that really i only have like little small nitpicks really but other than that i'm really excited about 
you know, Superman Lois. Like I said, I really wish the twins were a little bit, um, I wish the twins were like 10 years old or 13, 13 years old or something like that. Um, like I said, I want Jonathan to develop some superpowers. It needs to be um, some powers. I don't like that one child's normal, one child's power. Y'all y'all do that trope so much that it's, it's, it's out of hand. It's boring. So, no, leave it alone. Um, get John, John to develop some powers as well. Um, bring in some of the extended Superman family or whatever. Um, bring in Batman, of course. Because, like I said, we need to have that relationship with John, John, Jonathan Kent and Damian Wayne. That'll be a good relationship um, to have as well. Um, and let's see. What else do I want to see? Um, once you do this whole thing with the Captain Luthor, get him back to his own reality or whatever. But don't, don't let him be Superman's Lex Luthor. Because just because Supergirl got Lex Luthor doesn't mean that 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 alternate reality um, Lex Luthor needs to be his main Luthor because it just doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't work, to be honest. That's just my opinion. It doesn't work for me. Um, to be honest, wrap him up. Wrap his storyline up as fast as possible. I don't want a super... I don't want Superman's show to be a revolve around Lex Luthor when you got... When you got another when you got another Luthor chilling over at Supergirl right now that's that's just what I'm saying I you know just just let it go that's just my opinions on Superman and Lois but so far so good it's looking really good to see a refreshing turn and it proves something that Superman can be done you just WB DC at t CW, you just got to take your time or whatever. Give us Man of Steel 2 with Henry Cavill because just because, you know, you got um, Tyler over there for TV Superman, I want my Man of Steel 2. You know, I've been waiting for Man of Steel 2 since forever because I feel like we we can get we can get the we can get the Superman. We can get both Superman. You have the one on the CW and then you have the DCEU one. Everybody likes Henry Cavill. He's charming. Let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. Go off of the Superman Rebirth run. Go off of the um post. I mean the uh, the post Crisis Superman run. But you need to bring in Man of Steel too. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, those are my little thoughts. Tell me what you guys think about Superman and Lois. Are you guys excited to see Superman and Lois? Because I'm really excited. I know Lois is about to get into stuff because she investigated Smallville's bank. Because like I said. From the Superman and Action Comics Rebirth run, there was some creepy stuff going on on the farms anyway. So it'll be interesting to see if they'll take what happened in the comic books and tweak it enough to bring in to Superman and Lois. Because, of course, Lois is still an investigator or whatever and stuff like that. And I wonder what Clark is going to do for a job. We'll see. I can't wait to see it. But, you know... I'm excited for it. I, you know, this is the the first time in a long time to be excited about anything Superman related because you know, for some reason DC loves to self sabotage Superman. To be honest, which is weird. Oh, and I do hope um, Lucy Lane Lucy Lane comes in. You know, um, we already saw her in Supergirl. She needs to come in, and then she needs to become the villain in Superwoman. That's all I'm saying. So you got Lana Lane and the evil Superwoman, you know, fighting each other out. I don't know. I, I don't know. Or, you know, Lois and her fighting out. Since they didn't bring her into Supergirl, let's bring her into Superman and Lois. We have potential to show a little bit more of the Superman line and the Superman family. Let's do that. Don't don't think it's only just Supergirl. He has other characters that he can rely on as well. So it'll be interesting to see that. But yeah, those are my thoughts. Tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.